to get started. Uh, I have all my notes here because I'm bad at this. Um, hi, I'm Max. Hi. Uh, I'm a uh, novelist who's doing a residency here at Culture Hub. Um, for those of you who've never been here before, Culture Hub is a uh, really interesting place. It's a collaboration between La Mama Experimental Theater Company and the Seoul Institute of Arts in South Korea. They have spaces now in LA, Indonesia, Italy, here and Seoul. Um, they do a lot of work with artists who want to do stuff that involves emerging technologies, so stuff that people really haven't messed with a lot in creative contexts or new uses for things from artists who've never worked with technology before, all sorts of neat things. Um, I, uh, I ended up here in a really circuitous way. I had gone to an event here in like 2012 and ended up on their mailing list. And then um, on the mailing list saw a workshop in something called projection mapping, which is how you project onto like a three-dimensional surface, like a mask or a sculpture. I had no experience in that, and I just signed up for it because I was bored and didn't want to like write the book I was writing. Um, and it was super fun. And then about a year and a half later on the mailing list again, I saw the open call for the residencies and I did it. And the point of that story is one. Chica, the same person who taught me, is doing a projection mapping workshop on November 17th and 18th. LED mapping. Which is LEDs. Yeah. So if you ever wanted to build like an LED sculpture in your bedroom, you can, <laughs> you can do that. Um, and uh, it was a ton of fun. But also, um, yeah, I'd recommend any sort of creative in the room. If you have some like goofy idea that is different, this is a great place to do it. They also are like the preeminent live streamers of creative work in New York. So if you ever need it their services for that. Uh, they're great, and in general, all their events are, are fabulous. Um, so what I'm doing here is, uh, I did an earlier version of this in June, but the basic idea is I'm a writer. I sit in a lot of readings of all sorts. And as someone who had a background in music, I was used to seeing visuals that were tied to music. So I wanted to see if that could be applied to sort of oral storytelling. Um, and so in June, with the help of uh, Oren Shoham, who's somewhere there, we built a four-day prototype of a system that would use speech-to-text using the Google API and run it through a dictionary sorted by color to then create visuals. And this was just a four-day thing, but um, I actually should turn it on, right? <laughs> yeah, do that. Um, I think Max is going to be running across I'm this run a across. lot. No, just this one time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> But it, it's pretty easy to turn on, to be fair. Um, famous last words. Famous last words. <laughs> so if I flip this switch and start talking, Dang. it'll start going. And if I say a word like volcano, <laughs> waves, death, prince. <laughs> and so that's a 20,000 word dictionary. These. Um, Canadian computer scientists put together. Uh, so um, that was the early version. Tonight, we basically um, took this and ported it into a program called Unity, which is mostly used for video games, but lots of other things too. And an amazing group of people way smarter than me uh, made it happen. First of all, Sam Von Aaron, who's over there, did all the back end. Have it, has anyone here ever played the New York Times crossword app? Yes. So that's Sam's work. Yeah. Sam is the, the one game developer who works for the New York Times. Which I, like. I, I find that very cool. Um, and then the things you're going to see were created by um, Flan Falachi, who you'll see their crazy interpretation of this. Um, Flan is a member of Baby Castles, which is the great underground uh, art and video games organization in New York, which you should check out. Um, then Dennis Carr, who is another NYU Game Center alum, who has a, uh, a game coming out soon called Nerve Damage, if you're into shooting things, um, and color. Uh, and then um, Milan Kerner Separata uh, contributed two very amazing things, all the way from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, right there. Uh, and uh, my friend artist and designer Mark Price did a bunch of stuff that we weren't able to make happen. <laughs> but uh, he did a lot of work. So 
we're now going to get to the actual fun part. Um, the way this is going to work is uh, four amazing poet and writer friends of mine have agreed to read and try out this stuff. Um, this is obviously not this like choreographed event. It's just like another experiment, and we decided why not let it move into the public. So we're going to be like figuring things out as we go along, and, uh, but uh, it's, we, we might as well show it. So first up, we have my dear friend, old friend at this point, Megan Plunkett, who I went to college with, who was named the best new poet of 2018 and was the winner of the 2017 Review, Missouri Review Editor's Prize, as well as the winner of the 2017 Third Coast Poetry Prize, judged by newly minted MacArthur genius Natalie Diaz. Her poems can be found or are forthcoming in Narrative Magazine, Best Poets 2018, Third Coast, Pleiades, Rattle, Washington Square Review, among many others. As of a couple weeks ago, she became the poetry reader at a little upstart literary journal called The New Yorker. Totally, totally unrelated to this project, Megan's probably the best programmer in the room, which is interesting to her life. But um, yeah, so Megan Plunkett. to regret the cigarette tilted on the ashtray, the little smudge of lipstick on my teeth, how I stare like a buckshot target into the camera, my hair flipped like a mare's tail. Everything about me is asking. This is a fossil of me ossified into a half moon, grabbing at my ankles, 
my two nipples reaching out like the arms of a tired child. Look at my breasts and the ways they can be used against me, the way he has me, flat, malleable, wearing a younger face, the inexhaustible resource of my body spread out onto his skull-colored bed. It is my own shape that I am afraid of, the weapon of my body, how it points back at itself. So get ready. <laughs> I can read a room. <laughs> Nightshade for Amy. She called me the morning after. Her hair brambled into a nest. Her eyes an upshot of so what to tell me that after the bottles clinked out of his father's liquor cabinet, they fucked in every room. And she broke open, forgetting to count the days of her cycle, her hips a burst of red snarl all over the house, the sofa, <laughs> the kitchen, his parents' bedroom, a trophy of defiance they grinned through as she puddled unaware of the blood anchoring out of her. And when the sun rose, he called her bitch to the stains on his mother's linens, teardrop shapes sloping from where she was bent over the armchair, thick fingerprints purpling on the counter. She called me, and I flocked there in this instance of mourning, arms heavy with jugs of cleaning agent. She led me to the deepest mark of her, a nightshade, a bodiless heart imprinted on an eggshell duvet. It was something ancient, the way we took a knee and began to scrub, grinning into each other, dipping rags into cups of bleach. Why wouldn't this be as natural as saying our own names, as if we weren't familiar with this kind of slow removal, as if we didn't already know how to clean ourselves out of the world. Superstar, a former tumbleweed at the famous Shakespeare and Company bookstore in Paris, and a current junior at UCLA. Her first collection, Branches, came out in 2017, and she has a forthcoming 2019 collection from Not a Cult Press. To quote some random account I found today on the internet, quote, Rhiannon McGavin is the patron saint of and hero to all teenage girls. She has a dog named Macaroni. <laughs> Give me one second. Okay. Uh, thank you so much to Max and Culture Hub for organizing all of this. It's so wonderful. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, and it's very cold here. I don't know if anyone else is aware. Um, I had to put on a coat this morning. All right. Should be good or you just flip the switch. 
when you're ready on the mics. Oh. I have decided that you get to choose what your first kiss is. Here are my guidelines. You are awake. You want to. The person cares about you and you think they're swell for a full moment. It doesn't have to be love, but it could be front steps outside the palace, up to you, only on your knees if you are both crouching. And none of it hurts, no dares, no bleach, there's no submission to power because their teeth are as sharp as yours. You have a heartbeat. Pick your kiss like a lily soft in June and it is real. Maybe no fireworks. Maybe nothing burns past the skin for once. Take the harm and crumple it. It won't count. I've thrown away six first kisses to date. Banish them by any ritual you please. Drive out to the countryside and let it go. Shred the receipt. Cover the yard with tarp so they dry up. Easier to tear out. Secure it in a jar. Grind the glass under your heel. Coax the corsage out with a piece of fish to catch it by the ear. Soak it in salt water in the sun until it's evaporated. Laugh it off like a snob or a monk. If your gaze drifts over your shoulder, go wait out up to your calves looking for something worth keeping. The good kisses shine even out of the sea. They can grow. There are keys and velvet shoes. Know this, a world of bridges past your long walk home. I hang fine kisses upside down by a ribbon in my closet to smoke the grime. One yellow pot on the windowsill for a vanilla bloom the size of my fist. An incomplete list of new words. To Facebook is to rank women based on appearance. To speed is to fold a newspaper in half. A notification is a Facebook announcement of someone's death. A, rope, a, a vote is the time allotted to verify an address. To Skype is to shower in front of a man. An email is a group of cables under the sea and where there were mountains. To code is to explode mountains. A tweet is the realization that someone who raped one's friend in high school has just passed one in the crowd. A hammer is a small portable device. A computer room is the reach of a hand towards a coat pocket. A password is the sound a plywood door makes upon being closed by a draft. To trust is to explain one's place and date of birth. To scroll one's thumb across the open palm of a loved one. To troll is to fill woven nets with April fish. <laughs> <laughs> like any sounds? Well, no, you have a few words, but it'll start. Okay. No, okay. I'm just showing you. I'm Google just can't just it. interpret the sounds that I'm making? My Probably like, not. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Geography as according to Auntie L. Of course I know. Ask me anything. 
My home planet dangles off a branch beyond the canopy. Mm -hmm. Crack it open and everyone swallows the word for sky and heaven both. Call my name and half the women at the party turn around. Turn the map upside down. Now it's a tablecloth. Here is a park bench where your grandfather once stopped to double knot his shoes. Here is someone's cousin spinning with spread arms, ruby juice dried on her chin. You will find in some town's dinner and an argument and people sneezing with their full bodies. New Year's cards sent across this country of sudden noises, like stones lining a garden path, like a marble staircase worn in the middle until each step is also a cupped hand. We move, we move, atoms rock back and forth in place. Light after light becomes honey on the skin. Rose petals thick as ash scattered on a river. Where you touch sweetness, wheels of fire. Next week, a wedding, the front door laughs open. So who's dead? Who's dead? Chairs. You can come in. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have four more chairs. Yeah. Yeah. City was. Literally all of them named Angel. Seriously. You and Tommy. He's not here anymore. So just what sort of thing do you want? Ah, uh, man. Long list. Um well let's first go with that. The first one that Megan had. That the colors? Just the colors. Yeah, let's do it. Give me a sec. Hi, guys. Uh, I can't see you, but I feel you. Um, I uh, spent the so, entire ass day in my apartment, by the way. So you can flick the switch and just try it if you want. Hello. No. False. Oh, yeah. Falsehoods. <laughs> it's still true. Anyway, I spent the whole day in my apartment. And um, it wasn't good for me. Hold on, here we go. Um, there we go. And this is um, <laughs> a good reprieve from uh, just to see y'all here. Um, and this poem's kind of about that. Omen to get your ass up. And it's hard for me to believe, but believe I do. It's true. The morning passed me by without a thought or surrender. Thirst caked up without a quench in sight. And who will call out my name when all the doors and windows is shut? I see my homie waiting to cross the intersection of Flatbush and Woodruff. And it could be any nigga, Afro with metallic red headphones, gym shoes, unbothered by the day. But I know who I know, so 
I tear open my bedroom window and force my own messy head through the metal bars, which are really just suggestions anyway. And right away, the air is kind as ever against my chin and trailing to my neck and nipples alarm as good as any homie who sees me now and is Hey, booing, and rushing to greet the door of my building with her takeout chicken. She tells me a walk around the hood got her whole situation right. And so here I am, glad to be another loud, exercising the right to be beloved. I am saved for a moment, a suspended heaven, knowing I will be recognized. Summoning her is summoning me, hollering, Ashley, Ashley, Ashley. cheekbone, god of precision, blade at my throat, for a half hour you love me this way. Together we discover what I got from my folks, widow's peak, dandruff, hair growing fast in concentric O's, Claude, so damn beautiful I can count on one hand the times I've looked directly in your face for fear I might never come back. You, knower of me, to get right, I come to you. When I'm finna interview, when I'm finna banquet or party, when I must stunt, I come to you. It is mostly you, but not always. After all, you gotta eat too. So sometimes it's Percival, face like stones, except when he's smiling. Sometimes it's Junior, who sings the whole time he lines up my crown. No matter how soft my body or how many eyes find it and peel when I walk in the shop, in the chair, I am of them, not brother, not sister. When he wields the razor and takes me low, it's like when a woman gets close to the mirror to slide the lipstick on slow, draws a line so perfect she cuts her own self from the clay. Uh, how are you guys okay, by the way? I'm just like talking to shit them along. Yeah, no, you can interact. Yeah. Um, can we do that one that is like, when you talk, if the words the come up multiply, the multiply, ghost one? and then it collects them on the end? Oh, yeah, where, where there's the colors across? Were there colors? The like, the orbs. The orbs are the spirals. <laughs> uh, sure. Or you want the ghosty one? I, I think they both used it. Right. The same, um, and it was... But you want it where they go that way? Sure, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> We're gonna do this You mean, one. like, one is liberal here, like... I get it. It's, th that would be cool. I would be interested in <laughs> what pops up with that. <laughs> um, thank you guys for coming and hang out and listen to us read poems. Really nice. Um, Let's see if it. Okay. Oh yeah. Let me just really quick. <laughs> Can you still hear me if I talk like this? 
Yeah. Okay. It's not that big. This isn't like a grand hall. So I, like you can <laughs> I just, before I just talk more, I just really thank you. Um, and this, uh, I think this is my look, look, last poem. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Whatever you want. Truly my last poem. All right. Um, <laughs> again, it, it's, you know, I, I, I've been writing a lot about my neighborhood, which is where I live. Um, just Flatbush. And um, I live there with my boo. And um, I am black and she is not. And she's just like a five foot, like, you know, like white Jewish lady. Um, <laughs> she's very lovely. Um, and um, that okay is still just fucking hanging out. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I, all, all this is just to say, I, I think a lot about, um, as maybe we all do, or maybe I just have like, you know, deep issues. Um, I think a lot about um, where we end up, and and just like as a as a black person, as a queer person, um, and just a strange person. Um, I think a lot about how like, however the country, world, state, whatever is set up, my life has developed like sort of necessarily antagonistic of it. And it never really makes sense, but I always welcome it. And so sometimes me and my boo are like, you know, <laughs> making beans or whatever in our kitchen. And I'm like, this was not the plan. You know, like whoever made the country wasn't like, this is it. Like, let's, <laughs> let's make sure these two crazy kids like end up in black. You know what I mean? Black yeah. um, and so I, I, you know, this was not thinking about that and I was, you know, one night in our, did you guys know that, um, you might not because you live in LA, but did you know that, that some roaches can fly? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we discovered that a fa one fateful evening yeah. together and it really was like a yeah. level up in our like relationship. Like it was like, this is for real between us. Because they've like survived this and like now I know like I'm the one who will like deal with that fuck shit and she, she will like evaporate. You know, like, like, just, so I was thinking about, you know, all that and this, this poem came. So um, uh, this is my last poem and thank you for hanging out. And um, yeah. Love on Flatbush Avenue. Because the roach had wings <laughs> and tore through our crib like a landlord or a ghost and you screamed first, even though I saw it first, <laughs> heading for the light, and it hid behind the white curtain, or it colonized the whole window and promised to never die. And because it's been nearly eight years of my mouth on your mouth and your mouth and your mouth, I knew what I have to do. So <laughs> I took the bougie seventh generation cleaning solution that we buy because we concerned about our carbon footprint. <laughs> and I spray and spray and spray and punctuate each one with a scream and repeat about 11 times before the roach slows its juke and I hit him with something? Who can say what? Just something? That is not my hand, or my new clogs, or my anything I love or used to love. And I scream how, the roach looks like shrimp! <laughs> and I hear you laughing now from the other end of the apartment, and you are like, really feeling yourself. You chortle so much, it sounds like all your ancestors done joined you. And I yell from the landlord's new room, what's funny, bitch? And boy, that really does it. Because here you go, peeling and peeling giggles out your mouth. And here go, you're soft to be, guffawing right along with you. I mean, really carrying on. And your Getzel's there, too. I know, because you are laughing with your teeth and whole belly. And now the ruined bug is spread across the wall, and I holler and think it should be chalk outlined, but I bag it and run, snorting and laughing too, and my snot is stuck in the bridge of my nose, and I run some more down the hallway and out the front door and down the steps, and now all my people are with me too. Delcy and Ellie Pearl and James Gansey, and we run like we got wings and know where the light is, and I throw the dearly departed into the bins on Flatbush Avenue, and maybe it's raining a little, and so my afro is soggy when I return to you, and
and rinse my hands in the busted bathroom sink, and I look at you and think it is such a good thing to pick your own life. Oh, tonight I killed a thing, because you are not from a killing people, and we pant with our own jokes and inherited tongues and we tangle our separate homes together. Thanks. So, uh, thank you, Angel and Megan and Rhiannon. We're now gonna take a short break. There's beer and other things, right? Um, and uh, Jeremy is running a little late is almost here and we'll read after the break. And then after that, if anyone wants to try it out, we have poetry books. You can read your own shit into it. Um, everything, every, all this stuff that you've seen, this is all like was done in the last three days. Which just, you know, goes to show you uh, how at least I mostly spend my life as a waste. Um, so uh, thanks so much and yeah, enjoy it. And you know, at some point, like 10, 15 minutes, we'll let Jeremy. Oh, there he is. Yay. All right. How are we feeling, Frank or Jeremy? Jeremy. Oh, wow. Do you want to ride and roll? I'm ready, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to pass through. The train went half speed today. All right. what, you, what sort of vibe do you want on the screen? Um, okay, so this is like a, a, it's a shit play, as I say. Okay. It's also like very undone. So chaos and maybe like, I'm really into the like sort of like uh, green you can talk about. <laughs> sort of like 90s green. Do you, do you want it where it like spawns trees? Oh, that would be great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, they know. They've seen it. Wait, oh. yeah, wait, should we ask them? Have you, is there something you do, you'd rather see than what we're going to no, see? No, no, show us. Great. Yeah. Um, great. I should actually introduce you. Great. For a second. I need to so find the thing how this works there. when you start, you just flip that on. Great. I love how you're running in like this. Yes. Um, so. I'm going to talk a little about Jeremy. Jeremy O'Harris is an actor and playwright. Uh, his plays include Daddy, which is um, will be in the winter season at Vineyard Theater, starring Alan Cumming. Correct? Yes. Uh, production. Also, more imminently, um, Slave Play is opening at New York Theater Workshop on November 19th. And all of you should go, not the least because that play was written and dedicated to me. <laughs> um, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy's a superstar. He won this year's Paul Vogel Playwriting Award. He was a 2016 McDowell Colony Fellow. He's just uh, the greatest. Um, but seriously, New York Theater Workshop, November 19th. It's 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 a crazy play. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. Uh, all right, we'll set this up here. Oh, look at Sam. There you go. You, you into this, Jeremy? Oh, this looks great. <laughs> oh, great. This is the first playwright you've had try to use. Wow, okay, so when I'm ready, I just click this? You just click it up and you talk. Okay. Hey guys, so this is my thesis. <laughs> um, it's actually kind of funny. I'll give you some exclusive information. They, I, so I, I did this summer. I got, I got two shows um, off Broadway, which is like uh, weird because I'm finishing my last year of school. So everyone's like, "How are you gonna do it?" And I was like, "I think I can make it work." Um, and wow, there's so many things on there. Um, yeah, in a way, uh, the dean didn't hear about it because like the head of my program is always is also someone who does a lot of things. I was like, okay, cool. He said you can make it work. You can make it work. And he was like, you got two shows. That's great. And then a press release came out, and our dean was like, what the fuck? And they're like, this isn't allowed. And the head of our program was like, it's not. And he's like, no. Tell Jeremy he can't do this. I was like, I, I, I am going to do it. Anyway, a lot of things happened. Um, I got a lot of angry emails. And then because of one email I got, I was like, you know what? My thesis proposal is now different. And I'm writing a play called Yell. Y-E-L-L, -L, a documentary of my time here. Inspired by Gary Barber's The Student's Nigger, um, by Jim, and it's by me. And, um, but it's inspired, it's, it's dramaturged by Amato Marcin Firmino and Michael Breslin, who are um, very great. 
So I'm just going to read you guys some selections from it. I don't know. Let me know if you want me to switch it up. Yeah, you can switch it up now, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great intro. That was a good intro? Yeah. All right, hold on one second. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's Great. This play should move like lightning. This play is a clown play. This play does not have characters. This play does not have a cast size. This play is about angry black interiority. This play is angry black interiority. This is a shit play. This, is indul this play is indulgent. If this play decides to have actors in it, then they should all wear jock straps and vintage GL sweaters. This play, should, this play is about yell spelled seven exclamation points and pronounced like an actual yell in the script. Ah! Someone should be shitting in every scene. Literally shitting. Even if, the, even if the literal shit is chocolate bars heated up, I want to see it everywhere and I want it to smell like shit. shit. This play is dedicated to Arto and Reza. It's dedicated to Adrian Piper and Adrian Kennedy. This play is dedicated to Fred Wilson and William Povell. This play is dedicated to every closet drama whispered aloud in a dark, dank room. This play is dedicated to Brown for Board of Education. This play is dedicated to Miss Ruby Bridges. Beauty belongs to the sphere of the simple, the ordinary what looks ugliness is something extraordinary, and there is no question but that every ardent imagination prefers in lubric lubricity um, the extraordinary to the commonplace. 120 Days of Sodom, the March of Sodom. Um, okay. Prologue. Wherein Ruby Bridges and the Whippin' Poof sing Beyonce's ego to the tune of Lift Every Voice and Sing. I can't sing, so I'm not going to do that. Um, Ruby's burning bridges today. Ruby's burning bridges today. If you're frightened, stay away, because Ruby's burning bridges today. Ruby's burning bridges today. Ruby's burning bridges today. If you're frightened, stay away, because Ruby's burning bridges today. Little girl, do you know what you want? Why you want it? What it means to want it? Use poor, use ugly, and use black. You want all this? Use poor, use ugly, and use black, little girl. Use poor, use ugly, and use black. Better than you are better than you have tried and failed to hold their head high walking through these doors. Use poor, use ugly, and use black. What makes you think you deserve that you should? Use poor, use ugly, and use black. The Supreme Court, they said, use poor, use ugly, and use black. Segregation of white and Negro children in the public schools of the state solely on the basis of race, pursuant of, to state laws permitting or requiring such segregation, segregation, denies to Negro children the equal protection of the laws guaranteed by the 14th Amendment. Even though the physical qualities and uh, physical facilities and other tangible factors of white and Negro schools may be equal. Use poor, use ugly. And he's black. Segregation of children in public schools solely on the basis of race deprives children of the minority uh, children of the minority group of equal educational opportunities, even though the physical facilities and other tangible factors may be equal. Use poor, use ugly, and use black. The separate but equal doctrine adopted by Plessy versus Ferguson has no place in the field of public education. Use poor, use ugly, and use black. The separate but equal doctrine adopted by Plessy versus Ferguson use ugly black. The separate but equal doctrine adopted by Plessy versus poor, 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 porn, 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 porn. The separate but equal doctrine adopted by Plessy versus uh, for, uh, Plessy versus Ferguson has no place in the field of public edge alibi, 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 alibi. Y L G U ain't got one. Okay, I mean. Many Negroes have achieved outstanding success in the arts and sciences, as well in the business and professional field. Negro, Porch Monkey, Blackamoor, Jigaboo, uh, Bambala, Bootlip, Jim Crow, Jungle Bunny, Coon, Piccaninny, Sambo, Sooty, Teapot, Spook, Uncle Tom, Oreo, 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 Neeker, 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 Neeker. Many Negroes have achieved outstanding success in the arts and sciences, as well in the business and professional field. One, welcome. The interview. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Tea, coffee. Yes, um, coffee. We love coffee. Good choice. Thanks. 
Coffee is our wine up here. Keeps you up, keeps you going, keeps you regular flowing ideas, and it innervates. <laughs> so you can innovate, get it? Ideas. Ideas! <laughs> yes. Coffee is, uh, oh, sorry, you're welcome. Coffee, um, you know, it's also a diuretic. A fabulous diuretic. It agitates the uh, epithelial tissues in your stomach and the small intestine, producing in most of us a uh, gastrocolonic response. Did you know that? Wow, no, no, I didn't. Yes, yes, you didn't know that. Wow, well, you're welcome. <laughs> welcome. There's a lot of information like that here at your disposal. You're welcome. Does it affect you this way? Oh, does what? Coffee. Does it affect you this way? Do you, you know? Um, do you know that the hormone gastrin, it's, um, it's a peptide hormone, uh, aids in gastric motility, an organic laxative. Did you know that? No, no, I've never. Ah, okay, ah, uh, well, you're welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> Coffee promotes the release of gastrin, which awakens the colon, which is situated next to the rectum, see? Ah, yet yeah, once the colon begins its contractions, the rectum is awakened. It is awakened and then you defecate. And many of us do here, we defecate. Do you follow? <laughs> defecate is a verb, it means to expel feces from your body. <laughs> I want to write the plays. I'm, 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 I'm here, um, is this, I, I want to write plays. This is the interview, right? The uh, playwriting interview. I haven't always wanted to write plays, but I do now, I think. I think, yes, I know, I do now. Um, I've read so many and I just want to read more and I, you know, you know when I was young, I, um, I, I had this weird, it's a freaky talent. I'm a, I'm a freak, I don't know. I have this weird gift um, for knowing exactly how people talk. It's almost innate, um, but it's also learned because I, well, when I was younger, I had this therapist who challenged me to write down difficult conversations so that I would remember them, so that I could collect them and arrange my thoughts about them afterwards with her. Um, it was freaky. Um, and she, uh, yeah, well, she told me then, um, and I disregarded it, but she told me then that, uh, that that was something I excelled at. I was good at it, recalling things as they happened. Uh, I would just go into this sort of meditative state, a fugue state, and relive it, relive it all, like it was happening right in front of me, in a, in a movie or something, like VR, then write it all down. And those, recollection, those recollections were my first you know, they were like my first kind of plays, I guess. But I, I read more after those and I got better. And um, I started thinking about forms and I started thinking about structures. And this is the interview, right? Um, anyway, I decided that I wanted, needed to come here to do that more. Did you, did you read mine? Um, the one I sent, the, the play? I, I wrote a play. Um, it's about a boy and a man and a woman and a body of water. Am I in the right place? Is this... Um, I want to write plays. <laughs> I wrote you a long letter, a, a statement of uh, stating my intent. I said um, I wanted to go somewhere where I could do this for real, in a real way, do this, write plays, because um, I don't feel free to do that anywhere else. I feel trapped by so many things outside of my control. I don't want to be trapped by those things anymore. Is this the interview? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> this is the interview for, ah! Welcome, you're welcome. Drink your coffee. Oh, oh, I'm so, drink your coffee so you can stay regular, okay? Regularity is the key to playwriting. I'll have you know that careful and conscious attention must be paid to that which is expelled. And one must expel regularly and vigorously. Especially now, especially in these times. We live in dark times. Now, now, now more than ever, we have to stay committed to regularity. That's, it's, well, okay. For a long time, a lot of us here had a commitment to a sort of, um, a sort of constipation. Um, a backed up, a backed up, stifled approach to the work that we were all doing here together. Uh, there was a politeness to the way to our way of being, a sort of um, well, dark times. That's not our goal any longer. <laughs> we realized that sustainability was more important than politeness. 
And so in order to sustain and grow and evolve, we have decided as an institution to let things flow here. Are you hungry? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I could eat, yes. <laughs> well then let some flow, like me. Just watch. Uh, 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 mm. uh, 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 oh my god, what are you doing? Eating. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, that's, um, I thought you were hungry, not just for food, but for what we have to offer. A commitment to you, your growth, your maturation. Yeah, um, but <laughs> this, yeah, this can't be real. What's more real than what I'm doing right now? Uh, mm. Tell me that. Try some? I, I, uh, uh, there you go. Uh, 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 yes, there you go, now. Now, if you really, truly want to be tr free, if you truly want to experience that real, real, take a bite and swallow, that's where freedom just might be found. Uh, delicious. <laughs> Is this what ah! <laughs> feels like every day? <laughs> yes, and you're welcome. <laughs> welcome to ah! You're in. <laughs>
We can stop if you want. We can stop recording if you want. Actually, never mind. No, no, because if somebody gets on it, that'd be cool. So just like you. Thank you. 